All right, guys, we are live. Now I am gonna try <laughs> to not drop this. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna try to do the haircut as best, <laughs> little Lily, as best I can while showing you guys. Oh, maybe I'll just put it right here on the table. Okay, oh no, right here might be better. Okay, so there we go. Hopefully my phone won't drop this time. Now, uh, what I'm gonna use is uh, my seven inch curved shears. This is Comfort Sharp by Paul Brothers. Now this is a very high end um, luxury uh, scissors here. I think it's about 65 bucks. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, they're not any like special, you know, shears or anything. You just wanna, and then these are my thinners that I'm gonna be using, right? And it really has no, it, it, oh, it's called Razor. And I got this at an AKC show. All right, so what did that comment say? I saw something about, oh, what is it? How come I can't see the comments? Uh, live chat, almost, okay. Josh, Aaron, I thought you killed your phone. <laughs> yeah, I almost, I thought I did too, shoot. All combed out and she's washed and dried. There we go. I just wanna comb her out one more time. I just took, after I got her dried, I took her outside for a little walk. So <laughs> I didn't really have a chance to comb her out after, the, after we got her all dried because I wanted to give her a little break outside. So we just got back from a walk. So I'm gonna comb her out one more time. And I like to start with the, with the back foot first. Back feet, back foot, front foot, front foot, and then I finish with the head. Alrighty. Now, when I worked at a salon, that was different. When I worked at a salon, I, uh, like a grooming shop, I used to do the head first because um, sometimes the client would show up early, you know, you never know what happens. At least when the head is done, the legs and the feet, you know, the, you know they, it doesn't matter so much. People look at the head more. So I would always get the head done. That way when the clients come early, even if the dog's like moving around trying to look at, the, look at their mom and dad, um, you know, it doesn't matter because the head's already done. So when I'm working at a grooming shop, I do the head first, but without that kind of uh, pressure of trying to get it done before the owners come, um, you know, I like to just do the legs and feet first then the body, and then blend the head into the body. So here's what we will do. So do that. So I'm gonna round the feet first. I like to work from the bottom up, all right? So I'm gonna, oh, maybe, maybe I should do that for a foot first. Eh, whatever, I'm already on this side. <laughs> so maybe I'll just kind of tilt it here. So what I'm gonna do is lift that tail. Alrighty. So we round the bottom of the pads. And I've already shaved the pads before the bath. And I like to do the, you know, shaving, any close shaving like the pads and the sanitary area before the bath. Um, that way, even if that area gets itchy, um, just like if I got my, you know, neck shaved or anything like that, it gets itchy afterwards. So we do all the close shaving before the bath, that way after the bath, you know, she won't be itchy. Okay, so we round that foot out. And if they keep moving it, you can lift one foot up. Kind of keeps that foot level. Oh, oh. <laughs> I tell people grooming um, sometimes, you know, could seem like a game, a really tricky game of twister and operation at the same time <laughs> but anyways okay so i got that foot get that tail a little bit all righty now i'm gonna trace a little bit of the angles here just to clean it up Now we do the other side. And you see how the coat is already laying nice and flat? That's because of all the carding and you know all the combing and brushing we did before the bath. 
now that these are nice live hairs and healthy, they lay nicely, you know? When I, when I first got here, she was looking kind of, uh, you know, like fuzzy, you know? Anyways, so now the coat lays nice and flat to the body. Alrighty, and that's really, that's, the trick is the brushing and the combing. And you wanna comb in the direction that the hair is supposed to lie. So this way, I'm gonna comb this angle here, right? And then for the front of the leg, I'm gonna go this way now, right? And then for the back, I'm gonna go straight down. So even the combing, we're not just combing any kind of way, you have to understand the angles of the, of the dog's natural um, bone structure, and you follow that, right? So now, go ahead and uh, trim this one here. Okay. Now we, I, I like to lift it up. Oh, am I, am I killing the camera angle here? I like to lift the foot up a little bit just to get to the, you know, just so I can get to the bottom of things. No, <laughs> but so I can see the bottom of the foot. And there's a weird angle. Wow, I, 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 I suddenly have a newfound respect for groomers like Christina Pulaski and, you know, Pina, Irina Pankusevich. You know, these professional groomers who <laughs> groom at these weird angles so that we can see what they're doing and they explain everything that they're doing. I mean, shoot, mad respect. I now, at this very moment, understand how difficult that is. <laughs> All right, so let me see if I can go over here so I don't ruin the camera angle. Okay. Ready? So that foot is cleaned up. We'll clean up that angle a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> so now, if you see, oh shoot, <laughs> not, my, not me. See that nice little foot, nice and rounded. On the other side too, nice and rounded. Oh, there's a little spot right there where there's like a little mat that got pulled out. But compared to this foot, see how it looks like, you know, mops, like Grinch feet compared to that. And we didn't really take off a lot. It really isn't a lot. Um, actually, maybe I can try to do it. Nah, that's not gonna work. Okay, so I'll turn it back. So just to show you, it's really not a lot that you're trimming off. So um, a good groomer is not someone who can chop off a lot of hair the fastest. Um, a good groomer is someone who understands what ne hair needs to be removed and why it needs to be removed. And then once you understand what needs to be removed and why it needs to be removed, how you remove the hair really is your choice, it's personal preference. Um, so what we're going to do here, see that? So we clean that up. On the bottom. Oh, you guys see that spot there too? See a little red spot? That's uh, another area where just so much hair uh, was, was packed in there and it was also tangled up and uh, matted close to the skin. So when we brushed it out, it kind of turned red and overstimulated that area of the skin. So I'm gonna put a little bit of ointment on there later. And it's not really bleeding, it's just, it's just a little red. So, but that's gonna happen, especially if the, the owners are not um, combing their dogs on a regular basis and you show up once every six to eight weeks and you do two months worth of combing in one day, um, little spots like that can happen. But if you think about it, after two hours of combing all of that dead hair out, um, you know, like after two hours of combing all of this out, right? <laughs> um, this here, 
right? This, this little spot here, and uh, there's a little spot there. It's having two little red spots is actually, I, I say, a pretty good deal. You know, when you go through the whole entire dog, the whole entire body for two hours, and you get little spots. And this actually will go away probably by the end of the evening. So um, if you're doing this for the first time and combing your dog out, and you see little red spots, you know, especially in the legs, um, or the tail, the tail gets like that easily as, as well, then don't be alarmed, you know, just cool it down with the, and that's actually why I like to do it before the bath, because these areas here, once they get kind of um, overstimulated and inflamed, um, then, and like irritated, then the cold, cool water can help cool it down. So that's why I do like to do it before the bath, because um, when you uncover areas of the skin, that are already compromised and that are already kind of in bad shape, then it, it is gonna make it a little bit worse because you're pulling everything out and clearing it out of there. But um, it's, it, it's actually providing a better, so, cause if you feel it, well, you can't feel it, but when I feel it, it's, it's smooth. It's no longer crusty and built up and she's no longer reacting um, cause she would pull back, she would ah, ah, and you know, but she's no longer acting that way either, which lets me know that it, now it's comfortable. Now the skin is clear, and now this area can heal up much better. We've given, it was already compromised, but now we've cleared it, and we've given it a good environment to heal. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. All righty, so we did that leg here. Let me see this side here. There we go. Now that foot is done. You can see the difference here. So we, we don't really take off a lot, not a whole lot, just a little. And see, you can see that little bump there I was telling you about. But now, even if I touch it, she doesn't react because it doesn't hurt her anymore because we literally went in there and we combed all of that out. So it doesn't look good, I admit, it really doesn't. And I, I honestly don't like to see it either. It makes me feel bad. Um, and I tell owners all the time, I didn't pull up here today with the intention <laughs> of making that spot red. You know, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I just, I combed and that's what happened. But um, rather than try to avoid that, you know, by understanding what's happening and just understanding that's part of it, you know, um, even if we would have just shaved, even if we didn't comb it out and we just shaved it off, that would probably still be a spot there because it was already tangled and matted and pulling at that skin. So, you know, there's not a lot we can do to reverse the things that have happened, but there are things that we can do to help heal um, those areas once, you know, once it's already compromised. Okay, so last leg here. Alrighty, let me see if I can move the camera here so we can see up close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, oh, wrong scissors. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh, let's do it this way. There we go. So I'm gonna lift the pad up a little bit. Oh, Lily. Okay, now you see that? And I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's good. <laughs> there we go. And so this is why scissor control is so important because I have cut these pads before with the scissors. So <clears throat> you, wanna, you wanna have very good control of your scissors. And the trick is you don't wanna put your thumb in the thumb hole. You know, you wanna just kind of rest it and use it to, you know, and that way these scissors, even if my hands are kind of shaky, these scissors will be sturdy, right? So then, okay, let's get this here out the way. Like a delicate game of 
twister in operation at the same time. Okay. And ready? And I like to get these paws as tight as possible <clears throat> because, um, you know, my clients, I don't see them for another six to eight weeks. So for another six to eight weeks, I want this hair to be as short as possible so that it doesn't, you know, become like mobs and get too, you know, too dirty too, too quickly before, you know, I have time to come back and groom them again. Alrighty, so once you set the paws like that and they're nice and round, now what you can do is, oh, maybe I'll get closer here. Now what you can do is get your thinners here and we'll soften them up. And again, if they keep moving their foot, you just lift the one up. And I don't like to bounce shears, but with thinners, <laughs> I, I do. I, I kind of like to bounce them a little bit. Kind of go out with them, especially like right there. I made a little dip with the scissors, but once you soften it up and round it out with the thinners, these are kind of like um, our erasers, our magic erasers. <laughs> so anytime you make like a, you know, uh, too, too sharp of a cut or you go in too much, you can always kind of soften it and hide it with your thinners. So we'll go through with the thinners, soften up these round feet. Okay. There we go. So now the feet are nice and round. <clears throat> Let's check the tail while we're back here. This tail looks good. There we go. Alrighty. Now, now for the head. How, I guess I could hold it like that. I guess I could put it there, maybe. Oh, you know what? I'll do like this. Pointing it straight at it. That way, you'll have my view. Okay, perfect. All right, Lily. <laughs> Okay, so let me get a little better lighting here. Okay, Lily. All right, girl, we're almost done. Where's my thinners? There they are. Okay, so what I like to do with the head is I like to start with the eyes first. Lily, beautiful eyes. Okay, so. Oh, Ray D says, Lily is so cute. Yes, she is, isn't she? She's just adorable. Okay. So, I like to comb all of that up, right? And then hold the thinners at an angle and just cut all that away. Okay, there we go. And I like to get real close because, again, you know, I want it to last as long as possible. And owners love seeing their dog's eyes. So I'm going to try to clean up in between the eyes, you know, as best I can. Get it as close and tight as possible. There we go. Soften that up a little bit. And then what I like to do is comb this up, right? That way you see that little piece sticking out right here? Oh, you don't see it. Okay, so I like to comb this up, right? Now you see that hair sticking out right there? I like to go this way and just clip that right off. Oops, there you can see it. Okay, so then when you comb it back like that, perfect. So now you can see that eye. There we go. And now we'll do the other side the same way. We're gonna comb all of that forward, not the top here, but the one right there. C 
comb that forward and out. All right? And then I'm gonna get my thinners. And make a nice little diagonal line there, you know? So that way you get this nice little fan shape here, right in the middle of the eyes. Like a little triangle fan shape. There we go. See, so right here in the middle of the eyes, now we have this little little fan, little triangle. And let me see, I can see still see a little bit of hair sticking out there. So what we'll do is we can get our shears. There we go. And then, okay, so this side here looks a little bit, there we go. Okay, there we go. All righty. So now we've got in between the eyes, all right? Okay, so I can move her back a little bit. Now, I'd like to do the ears next, right? Once I get here, oh, we could do the visor too. So if it, because I'm doing like a Westie head on, on her, uh, I'm gonna do the ears first, but if it was a, just a no, another normal dog, after I do the eyes, I do like to do the head and you just comb the hair forward like that. And then at like a 45 degree angle, you know, like a tilt, you just scissor that in. There we go. <clears throat> and then I can, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit more after I do the ears. <clears throat> the reason why I like to do the ears um, what, first when I'm doing like a Westie head is because this shape, the shape of the ear is gonna determine the rest of the shape of the head here. So here's what we do. And this, I actually learned about eight years ago from a late, maybe, yeah, about eight years ago from a lady named Barbara. Um, Barbara Johnston, she owns um, Swanky Paws Pet Salon in Lawrenceville. And she was the one that originally taught me um, how to do these, the Westie head and start with the ears. And it's amazing that I remember and still use it even to this day, you know, something she taught me eight years ago. So thank you so much, Barbara. All righty, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull all the hair to one side, right, to the back, right, so that's the back of the ear. Here's the tip of the ear right here. So what I'm going to do is cut right into the tip of the ear. See that? So, oh, Michelle O says, please groom a Bichon live. So, okay, I actually have a lot of Bichon clients. All right, there we go. So see, that gives you the shape of that back side of the ear. And it gives you almost that tip right there at the tip of, of those Westy ears. Now, comb everything to the front of the ear, just like we did to the back. So now we're gonna pull all this hair to the front. Now that's the tip of the ear right there, right? So we're gonna cut right into the tip. Now I like to keep my finger, my thumb right there where the tip is. So I don't actually cut into the leather, but there we go. So now, oh, when you look at this ear, you can almost see that point, you know, the Westy pointed ear, right? Compared to this ear that looks like still shaggy, right? This one almost looks um, shaped already, right? So now, you could just clean it up and you can do it with your thinners. You could do it with your regular shears. There we go. So we clean up the front part there, All right? Oh, I have a question, okay. Oh, what is the question? Venetia 2008, so I have a question. Why do some dogs get slightly red after grooming? My pup just recently had this happen to her. Yes, because um, they're stimulating the skin. So a dog's skin is actually um, thinner and more fragile than humans. Actually, they say that a newborn baby 
an inf human infant baby has a thicker thick skin than a dog. So dogs have very thin, um, only five thin layers of skin. So when you're doing a lot of combing and brushing and things like that, you're stimulating that skin and it's very easy for the skin to get overstimulated and kind of turn red. So mm. that's why, but it's nothing to be alarmed of. Usually, as long as the dog doesn't fuss over it, you know, um, maybe if they keep licking or chewing themselves, put a cone on them. But usually by the end of the night, it's, 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 uh, it goes away. Unless, you know, the, the groomer didn't do a good job brushing out all the dead hair and the crud and everything. If it's still inside the skin, then obviously it's still going to make them feel uncomfortable. And they're probably going to go ahead and continue chewing at it and stuff like that. So... Not to, not to say anything bad about groomers who, who don't, it's just because there's a high demand for groomers who are fast. Um, I actually fired a couple of clients and I don't think it ended up very well. But anyways, because they just kept wanting me to go faster, faster. They just wanted me to, they kept you know, asking me to cut the time down and groom their dog faster and faster. And I was like, I just can't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fast groomer, you know? Um, and there's just no possible way to do it fast. I was like, uh, how long do you want me to, how, how fast do you want me to get the groom done? And I was like, you know, it's two hours enough? Because I was like, two hours gives me just enough time to get the dog combed out, you know? So anyways, I fired them. But I, I also let them know, like, um, there's no reason for us to go back and forth and keep, you know, making each other miserable. I'm not a fast groomer. There are a lot of fast groomers out there. So just call one of the faster groomers, you know? Like, why are you bothering me? But anyways, alrighty, so we got that ear. Now we'll do this ear. Alrighty. There we go. Let me see here. <clears throat> Good shake. So I'm gonna do it this way with the camera. Alrighty, there we go. I'm gonna delete this afterwards anyway, so <laughs> just a little treat for whoever's watching live. Cause as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna delete this video. <laughs> okay. So there's the tip. So I'm gonna hold it with my fingers, right? So I don't cut the tip. And I'm gonna cut right into it. Any tips for a multi-chan that won't stop scratching? He doesn't have fleas. Um, yeah, I would, I would get one of these and just go, go through it, you know? Um, and I, if that doesn't help with the itching, then I would go ahead and recommend them to the vet because there might be something else going on. But usually, usually if you could get a fine tooth comb through a dog's coat, they're not gonna itch. <coughs> Sorry about that. I just breathed in some hair <coughs> right down my throat. <coughs> oh man, that wasn't fun. Oh my goodness, okay, here we go. All right. All right, that's not a good angle for me. There we go. Oh, what did I say? Uh, Anne. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Anne, since you're there, is this okay? Anne, is this okay? Is this okay? Is this okay, Anne? <laughs> okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> I guess that last syllable, Annie. Oh, man. Syllables are important, huh? I thought that song would work without that last to any part. Anyways, <laughs> it's a good thing I'm gonna delete this. Okay, now let's go ahead and get this. Oh my goodness, sorry about that guys. There we go.
Now, you see how I hold her? <clears throat> I don't really, I don't really grab, you know? I, um, sometimes I do if I really need them to stay still and they're really fidgety, but usually I like to give them an obvious way out. So even how I, how I hold her, if she wanted to, she can turn her head and get out of this if she wanted to. And I like that. I like giving them the obvious way out. That way if they needed to, if they ever felt, if they felt like they had to get out of this, they can. And that way they don't feel trapped and they don't feel as uh, stressed because they know that there is an obvious way out. And I always give them the obvious way out. I give them that option. And that, that's also another reason why my grooms take a little more time as well because you know, rather than restrain the dog and put them up to like a groomer's helper, tie them up to the grooming arm, you know, re rather than restraining them more, I want them to trust me more <laughs> so that they'll just give me their cooperation. Okay. Let's see what that watch set says. Um, I am, I am, I am too, and okay. Oh. Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, glad I caught this. I plan on bathing my dogs tomorrow. Perfect. I brought him to the vet and she just puts him on antihistamines every time and it's temporary fix. Exactly. And that's the thing. I think, you know, the vets who, who argue with me and tell me that I shouldn't be grooming, like I shouldn't be brushing and combing these dogs as thoroughly as I do and spending so much time doing it, they tell me I shouldn't be doing it. And it's like, wait a minute, those same clients that told me that their vet told, them, told me, you know, said for me not to do it, their dogs are all cool now. And um, actually one of my clients, she said that this, the summertime is the worst time of the year. This year, their dogs were fine. She didn't have to take her dogs to the vet. And the vet's probably mad at me, right? Because that's a regular client of his. Because all he have to do is just prescribe a man a histamine, right? I'm not trying to down all the vets. I'm just saying the ones who argue with me <laughs> about the importance of brushing your dog. I mean, are you crazy, right? Could, could you make it any more obvious as a veterinarian that you're just trying to get the cash grab of that monthly client so you can give them more steroids and antihistamines and stuff like that? I'm just saying, you know, don't argue with me about <laughs> the importance of brushing dogs, um, especially if you're a vet. Uh, okay, let's see. <clears throat> well, uh, hi, it's Ann, but, Ann, but spelled Ann, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I was trying to make the song <laughs> with Ann, but it didn't work out. You should leave this video up. Okay. I see that someone wants you to do a Bijan. How about a Cavachon? I'm kind of lost on the muzzle. Okay. I am, Ann. I am too, Ann. She's such a good doggo. Yeah, she is. I also don't think I'm getting the underside of the chin short enough. Can you talk to my doctor? <laughs> um, no, because I don't really like to argue with people. Honestly, I, confrontation kind of makes me, uh, so, um, even, even the vet that flat out told me that I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing, I just told him, okay. <laughs> I didn't argue with him. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so now we're starting to get the finished, finishing touches here. And then we can soften up the visor, soften up that muzzle. Right, girl? Mwah. You're such a good girl. Okay, and then, yeah. <clears throat> I, think we're, I think we're good, right? I mean, let's go right here. Yeah, right, I think. When that, and we're pretty much Done. There you go, girl. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes when you go look at the dog with the camera, it, you can see things that pop out at you that you didn't see while you were grooming them. So we'll just go through and I can get some of that hair out the way here. Oh, sorry about that, Lily. <laughs> There you go. Some of that out the way. Okay, so now. Alrighty. Now let's look at, oh, so right here looks like it's a little long there, so I'll touch that up. 
Uh, looks like there's a little bit of hair sticking out there. Alrighty, so let me touch that up real quick. Oh. There we go. So. Alrighty. And then there's a little bit of hair here. That was a little bit too long for my liking. There we go. Is my head in the way? Okay. All right. Oh, you're so beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. So there is Lily. Lily, you're so beautiful. Oh my goodness, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is that? Okay, I see it. Okay, so. <laughs> so this. This is the OCD part of grooming. You see like little hairs sticking out that kind of ruin the image. There we go. There we go. Wow. So earlier when I was combing her out, especially her tail, I mean, she was screaming, kind of yelping because it was so packed and hurt. But now I can go through with her comb with the fine tooth comb. Her, I could go with her tail with the fine tooth comb and she's not reacting now. Even her legs, they're bothering her earlier. Now she's okay. So this is, I feel like this is grooming, you know, combing and brushing the dog. This is grooming. The haircut is a haircut, <laughs> you know, so I think, you know, by doing a haircut, that's, you know, that you're, makes you a hairstylist, but by combing and brushing your dogs, cleaning their ears, you know, clipping their nails, brushing their teeth, this is all grooming. So I want most pet owners to consider themselves groomers. You may not know how to do the haircut, you know, or you may not be good at it, so you may not be comfortable calling yourself a hairstylist, a doggy hairstylist, or a pet stylist, or whatever they call that, but you can feel comfortable and honestly say that you are a dog groomer if you take the time to groom your dogs, which means comb them, brush them, check their nails and teeth, their ears, you know, hygiene. Grooming is hygiene. So now that she's all combed out, she's all done. We'll put her collar on her. There you go, girl. Oh. Alrighty. Now I do obsess a little bit over the haircut <laughs> because uh, even though most of my, well, most of the work is the brushing and most of my focus is on the brushing, I say brush more, bathe less. I do want to make a Make sure the haircut looks good. You're all done, Lily, good job. Because um, I don't want people to look at their dog when I'm done and say, that's why he talks about the skin. <laughs> Cause he can't do a good haircut. You know, I don't want that to happen. 
So I wanna at least you know, do a really good haircut, but then keep talking about and focusing on the skin so that people will say, ah, oh, the skin is really important to this guy. Not, you know, yeah, I talk about the skin a lot too. I'd push the skin too if I couldn't do a haircut, you know? <laughs> so I do, do I wanna do a good haircut, but my, my real focus and most of my time is spent taking care of the skin. Hopefully that helped guys. Oh, I did see some comments. Let me see here. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Uh, okay. Lily seems to, a bit more comfortable now. Yes, she's, she's, she's on the bed actually, um, but I won't show it to you because it's my client's bed. Um, please leave the video up. Uh, okay, all right. I mean, but I, I just, uh, all right, it's fine. I look foolish anyways all the time. <laughs> I'm very interested in seeing how you do, oh, what did I say? I'm very interested in seeing how you do the face, even though it's a different breed. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. I missed the first part. Please leave the video so I can see the beginning. Oh, Marsha, Marsha Henshaw says she missed the first part. Marsha, you didn't miss much. It was probably only the most helpful thing I've ever shared in my entire life, but no big deal, I'm gonna delete it. I was kidding, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, what was the next one? Okay, 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 Crystal LaCroix, me too. Oh, hey, what's up, Crystal? Ann says, Ann Watman says, how do you clean the towel and get the hair out? My dog is much more comfortable with the towel on the table, but I haven't used it when I clip just while I'm drying. Well, um, I just, you know, dust the towel off and, you know, comb, it off, comb the hair off with the comb. But then also, it's called my wife. I put it in a big pile. It's this magical pile that I put in the laundry room. And then a few days later, they're all clean and magically folded. I, just, I don't know. No, it's, <laughs> it's my wife. Uh, let's see. Okay, Michelle, oh, I turned on notifications just in case you groom a Bichon and I miss it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Michelle, um, is that Michelle O? Michelle Obama? That was kidding. <laughs> um, Ann Watson, I'd be thrilled to, I'd be thrilled too, Michelle. Um, D Little says, thanks so much. This was excellent. Hope you'll leave it posted. Okay. Ann says, I meant to. Lily, looking good. Where is everybody watching from, says Michelle O. Uh, Ray D says, Marilyn, Corin bro, 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 Corin bro, says, great job, June, from the UK, wow, Michelle O is from Ireland, wow, um, flip side, you are, I'm amazing, did you just, did you just see me fumbling, <laughs> Ann Watson says, I need a wife, no, you don't need a wife, you need a Kimmy, <laughs> not just any wife, my wife, anyways, um, is that your home grooming business? Yes, so I'm in, this is not my home. I'm in a cl my client's home, and the only reason why I even thought to stream this live is because she's not here, and you know, not only does it you know, help with liability, you know, it gives proof of what happened during the groom um, because she's not here, but also um, she told me before she's totally cool with me um, you know, sharing and posting on social media. Some, people, some of my clients don't like it. Um, Jola Hinton. Himnick says from Scotland. Wow, Scotland. Ann Watman says, Wisco Ann's from Wisconsin. Yvonne Ray's lax in the house. Yes, please leave it up. Okay. LAX. Oh, okay, LAX. Um, thank you. Ann says, thank you so much. This is the first time I was able to be here live for the video. Wow. Oh my goodness. What did I just do? Okay. I almost reported that comment, Ann, <laughs> by accident. Uh, Flipside says, Yosemite, California. Wow. Mary Roy, are, are many of your clients always home? Yes, a lot of my clients um, are home, or if they're not, you know, um, still, some of them don't really like me posting, you know, their house and stuff like that. Uh, Crystal LaCroix, Maine, West Virginia here, wow. But yeah, and some of my clients actually sit and, and we talk the whole time while I groom their dogs, it's really nice. Oh my goodness, I won't tell you who, but one of my clients, um, her son was back from college and I mean, they live in a mansion, okay? It's, it's just a mansion, right? The millionaires, I mean, I would, I would assume, I didn't ask them about their financials, <laughs> but I would assume they're millionaires, right? Just, you know. Anyways, he's in, he's in the bathroom with me, we're talking the whole time, you know, we're talking, it just gets philosophical. I don't know why, things just tend to get philosophical <laughs> when you're talking to me, but, um, 
we it started getting real philosophical. We started talking about life, the meaning of life, you know, our purpose here and things like that. And I, the, the conversation shifted a little bit and I told him, I, I actually am working on really, you know, letting go of resentment and anger. I have a lot of deep resentment and anger. And it's, it, it, you know, I never even realized it until now that it's really big, a big problem. And I told him that I resented, um, no, I was envious. I told him I was always envious of rich kids. And I always blamed my parents for, you know, my circumstances, right? And I always tell my, my parents, like, why couldn't you guys be rich? Why couldn't I have been born in a rich family, you know? And I was like, I envied rich kids. I envied you. I was talking to, this, to, the, to the kid, to the son. I was like, I envied you without ever even knowing you. I had no reason to resent you, but I envied you so much to the point of resentment. And I actually would see rich kids and I would point at them. I'd be like, oh, must be nice and talk trash about them. You know, and I would always just have negative feelings towards rich kids. And I was like, you know, now that I meet you and we talk and I get to know you and I get to know, you know, like, I, I, you know, I, I realized that I had no, I had no reason. I had no, like, there was no justification for my resentment towards rich kids, right? And then here's what he said. <clears throat> he said, I know nobody's going to feel sorry for me. You know, it's like, and I know I'm in a blessed situation. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm very grateful. Don't, you know, he's like, I, this is, you know, I, I understand my situation. I understand how grateful I should be and that nobody's going to feel sorry for me. But he was like, the pressure that I feel, <clears throat> you know, be, having parents like this, he's saying, especially my father being such a successful person, the pressure that he feels, he feels like he doesn't even get to live his own life. He has to somehow feel the shoes of his father, you know, somehow live up to expectations, you know, and yeah, I just never thought of that. He was like, sometimes when I'm away at college, the pressure is just so much. He was like, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes. And I never, I never considered that. I never, ever considered what it would feel like to actually be the son of somebody so self-made, you know, important, like, you know, like, wow, such huge fill, shoes to fill. I never considered that. You know, they drive nice, fancy cars. They live in a nice, fancy house. But all of that comes with the price. There's, it, you know, it all comes with responsibilities and obligations, you know? And now that I think about it, shoot, I'm lucky that I was born <laughs> with a father like I had, you know? Like, oh my goodness. Um, all I have to do is not beat up my kids. And I've already, <laughs> I already suppressed my dad, you know? So anyways, I just, yeah. Some of these conversations that I've had with my clients and their kids and, you know, just have been life-changing for me. Um, let's see here. Uh, Yvonne Reyes says, oh, Crystal LaCroix says, how many, how many clients do you have total? Total, I think we have like 42, I think. And we actually, no, because we fired a couple, but still, we have, we have more than I can handle, Crystal. Uh, Yvonne Reyes, how long did it take to groom that cutie? Um, I got here like around two, it's six, so, but that I did take breaks and we went and walked. So probably about three hours. It probably took total working time about three, maybe three and a half hours. Um, Liz Vargas, but you know, but that's, that's just because there was a lot going on this time because summertime, when I come back next time and groom her, it probably won't take that long, um, Yvonne. Uh, Liz Vargas says, hi, from Liz Marin, Marin County, California. I watch all your videos. Wow, they really, wow, thank you so much. They really encourage me. <laughs> Probably because you're like, if this guy could do it, shoot. Um, Michelle, oh, I have a fridge magnet that said, money doesn't buy happiness, but, pre but I prefer to cry in a Ferrari. <laughs> um, Marcia, you fired clients. What causes you to let a client go? Um, what causes me to fire a client is when I feel like they don't really understand what it is I'm doing and they just, they just want to pay me. That's when I fire them because I'm, I'm out to make a difference, not just make money. And so I want to do business with people who believe what I believe. I want, I want to do business with people who appreciate um, the, the time that it takes to do a quality job and to do honest work, right? I want... I want people who are on board who believe what I believe. I don't want people who just know how to write a check. So if I get the feeling that this person um, just wants to write me a check 
and they don't really care about the information, about what it, what it is I'm doing, well, then I'm not, I, I'd rather not come back. <laughs> um, Anne Watson, people are always interesting. I'm always almost pleasantly surprised. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, Steel Texas, what's up, Steel Texas gal? Woohoo, I finally caught you live. Shout out to the family. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, the family, I gotta get going. Um, and I'm usually unhappy because groomers work too fast. That's the reason I learned to do my own, exactly. And that's exactly why I started this YouTube channel, because I wanted to help owners to do it on their own, because grooming is such an intimate bonding experience. It only makes sense that the owner should you know, get involved with it, because if you watch dogs grooming each other in a natural setting, it's two dogs that really care about each other, and the, they're strengthening. It's, it's, it's a bond-building, you know, activity. Monkeys in a tree when they groom each other, you know, um, they they wouldn't let just a strange monkey that's not part of that group join them on that branch and start grooming them, you know. Dogs too. They wouldn't let a strange dog that wasn't part of their group just come in and start grooming one of them. Grooming is a is about the relationship. Uh, Mary Royal, you have you help us as groomers too. Awesome, and Watson and Watman, I really appreciate you. I've always done a lot. I'm very slow. It takes me about six hours to get everything done. Exact, <clears throat> but I mean, it takes me six hours to do that um, poodle. Uh, the picture that I put up of the poodle yesterday, that picture the client sent me. Actually, I didn't even take that picture, but um, yeah, that that poodle took me about five hours, five six hours. You know, I mean, but how long should it take? One, two, you know. <laughs> I mean, grooming takes time because nature requires our time and our effort. And nature has provided us with this way that we can show our dogs in a very clear, crystal way that they understand. It's, it's literally speaking their language. We're telling them, hey, I care about you. I love you. And nature has given us this activity called grooming. It's provided us a way to really show our dogs that we care about them. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Ann Watman, that would be, that would have been eight for me. <laughs> yeah, and Ann Watman, Ann, um, if you're grooming your own dog, why, why even try to get it done all in one day? You know, if it's going to take eight hours, maybe just do three, three hours one day, three hours another day. You know, take, you know, spend the week on it, you know, because grooming, again, it's not about getting it done. You know, it's about how it's done and why it's done. Right? Uh, hopefully that helps. I gotta get home and uh, my wife told me she's cooking me some steak, so I'll see you guys. Oh, Ann Watman, you are right. Sometimes I go back the next day and do the nails and ears teeth. Exactly. Corin Bro says, my husky loves to be groomed by his mama. Exactly, exactly. And if you think about it, why, do, why are there so many accidents in the grooming shops, right? It's not because the groomers are bad people, it's because the dog doesn't know who that groomer is. Right? If it's a rare, if it's the, if the dog has never met that groomer before, just because the groomer is wearing a uniform and has a name tag, they don't care. You know, that only works on humans. Dogs, you know, I never walk in and say, hey, by the way, I got a YouTube channel. You know, <laughs> I wrote a couple of grooming books. Dogs don't care. You know, all they care about is, do I know this person? You know? Okay, so last comment uh, Crystal LaCroix. I love your philosophies. Thank, thank you so much. Um, I tell everybody, I'm a philosopher who just happens to choose grooming as a profession. <laughs> Ray D, thanks for sharing. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you so much, Ray. And Corin says, thank you, June. Thank you so much, Corin. I love you guys. Here's the thing. The reason why I, I'm, I'm so happy to share and, and so happy to give as much as I can is because being broke, here's one thing about being broke. There's no question where the support is coming from. <laughs> it's not coming from ad clicks. It's not coming from any kind of marketing budget or anything. I don't spend, I don't, I don't have any money to spend on marketing. All of my success, all of my support has come from you. Seriously, you guys share the, all of my success <clears throat> and I am, I am, uh, I am very, very deeply aware of this. <clears throat> All of my success has come from the generosity of people like you. <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to get emotional, but I'm serious. <clears throat> I, really, I really appreciate it. <clears throat> I don't deserve it. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how it happened, but I, <clears throat> I really appreciate it. I really love you guys. <clears throat> Thank you.